Right, so it's the end of the weekend and the end of our time test driving this Hyundai Doosan. Is that the right way of saying it? I think it's a T. Tucson. 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 Um, yeah, so I just wanted to give you a, a small tour of the inside of the car because I'm really impressed with it. There's quite a bit I like and I think Raj can tell you a bit maybe about the drive. So details I like. Obviously we have a mirror on the passenger side. There's also a light. So, you know, perfect for checking your makeup whilst you're on your way out. So that's pretty snazzy. So if you want to charge your phone, it has a USB port and an aux. I don't know what that means. And here we have these things. So you can plug a iPod or other music device in. Cool. Okay, to turn the engine on. Don't need them. Push to start. So we have individual heating on both sides. So perfect for me and Raj as we like temperature. So I like it warm. Raj likes it cold. We also have heated seats at different temperatures. And you can also have a cooler seat, good if it's hot. And some other buttons that are probably useful for driving, I guess, heat stuff. And that's all comfort stuff. And then here this lets you know who's got seats and seat belts on and the passenger airbag stuff. And then up here, coming to focus, we have this kind of middle screen. And this is where you control, so we'll start over here. This is your sat nav, so if you press that, you can pop in your address or points of interest wherever you're going. And then it shows you a map of where you are. Media, if uh, you're connected to your iPod. And then your radio. Make me go and it's uh, digital, which is cool. And that's for your sunglasses. You like that one, don't you? Or secret chocolate. Stash. Yeah. Yeah. So excuse the mess. We have been in Devon and out in the country, so it's a bit messy. But so at the side, there's loads of space for like your drinks or your bottles of water, snacks. I've been using this as a handy phone holder. Lots of space in the glove compartment. You can put your pen in there. And then over this side, there's like a small pocket here. And then there's room for two drinks cups here. A bit more for your bits and bobs. And then here. Oh, sweet. Stash. A really deep, like, in-betweeny, boxy thing for all your sweets. Because that's very important in a car. So for me, it's more about the driving experience. And that all starts with the steering wheel which I quite like, it's premium sort of style steering wheel, leather covered, it's got a nice styling to it and it's about the right size for this type of car. It's got cruise control here, in particular something I liked, uh, if you see up there, it's got cruise. Oh, let's get into focus. You got it? So it's got cruise, which is your normal cruise control, but actually, strangely, one of my favorite features is that it's it's the limiter so you can set the car to go at the speed limit obviously and no matter how much you push down on the accelerator it'll only go up to that speed limit so that stops the whole you know speed creep when you're on a motorway you've got phone controls here radio controls so it's an inbuilt bluetooth which is good i didn't get to try it out this time around but that's useful it's getting built into quite a lot of cars these days in terms of the controls as a driver everything's within reach of where you need it this one's an automatic it does have a manual setting but up and down and it's got an electronic handbrake but that's pretty much like a normal car what's pretty special about this car and something i haven't come across before in other cars that i've driven is the amount of safety features that are in it see this button that's a blind spot detection button. So it basically says, if someone is in my blind spot, either side, it'll come up on the wing mirrors. Uh, there, you might not be able to say it, but it flashes to say that someone is in your blind spot. So if you're looking around, it'll flash and tell you somebody's there. You've got this one here, which is probably the weirdest thing on this, on this car and a weird thing to experience, but very good, is it tells you 
if you're coming up to the lines on a lane so it's like a it's like a control for the lanes that you're in and if you approach that lane and you're not indicating it will actually move the steering wheel to keep you within it so although I wouldn't try it you can take your hands off and it will probably move the car within those lines and sort of drive itself but it's just as a sort of wake-up call if you're moving towards the edge too much the only other stuff that's sort of for the driver is this your parking sensors your drive modes the drive modes it's got normal driving and it's got sport mode these are for so it's a 4x4 four four, so these are your downhill assist and your diff lock and this one I'll press it and if you look up here on the hood it's basically it's a parking assist so it will help you parallel park and it'll help you reverse park using a series of cameras and sensors around the car it will move the steering wheel for you uh, and probably the other thing which was most surprising for me is if you put it in reverse this is behind the car there's a little camera where the license plate is uh, that helps you reverse and the lines show you where you're going to end up if you turn so if I turn the steering wheel that's showing me that if I carried on with my steering wheel there I'd end up where that yellow line is but what was interesting is this far away from that wall is how far away I thought was safe using my judgment and mirrors and my over 10 years of driving I would leave the car there looking out the back rear window that's where I'd leave it but looking at the camera I've got tons of space so I can reverse a lot further and considering the size of the car it's not a small car it's quite a big car it is a 4x4 there's loads of space we've sat in the back there's loads of space there's loads of space in the boot um, all the parking sensors and help really does make it a much more maneuverable car than you might think so one final thing that I want to share with you is just how uh, maneuverable the seats are because normally you might get a bit of uplift forwards backwards but with these chairs because this is quite a high car but you can nice. actually go down and you can also go all the way back. Oh, oh my God. Uh, ah! There you go. And then you can look up out of the skylight, the full length. I can't, we didn't do this. Skylight, oh, I wish we'd done this. We've done this when we got home. We, we so should have done this on our road trip. This is so fun. Oh, this is such a good road trip car. If we didn't have Deborah the van, this would be such a good replacement. And I, I genuinely mean that. This has got so much of the features that would make our life easy for road tripping, I yeah. think. So including beds, by the way. Including way. beds. Like this is this is pretty comfortable lying down. Um, yeah, so for both me and Raj, I suffer with a bad back and Raj has a bad knee. So being able to move maneuver the chairs around so much to kind of suit our posture and and comfort is is a really good move and we just driven kind of four five hundred round four we have just driven a four five hundred we've just driven about five hundred miles this weekend <laughs> I can't say that. okay so that is our quick review of the Hyundai Tucson no, no. that is our <laughs> Tucson. That is Tucson. our quick review of the Hyundai Tucson. Tucson. Okay. No, there's no, it's a silent C. Okay, try it. That is our quick review of the Hyundai Tucson. Um, we had a lot of fun this weekend driving it um, and I would actually quite recommend this. I think this might be recommended to my mother actually. I think she'll enjoy that because she's going to get a new car at some point I think.
That's insane. Oh, this is 